Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we've got a new Fragment Fusion shenanigan thing going on a week from today, 30th of September. They're dropping it. It's actually on Lady H's 40th birthday. So I might not be around, but anyway, we're going to get on and kind of talk through what he's got going on, what's in his kit, and how's it going to work. Now, this might end up being one of those cheaty ones which are really difficult to get. So it says here, we're planning to launch a fusion event on the 30th. Um, a fusion event of a new champion, Sigmon the High Shield. To right, High Shield. Long Shield. Um, faction Banner Lords, Legendary Champion, Defense Based Champion, um, and a Magic Affinity. So Defense Based is normally decent. It means that they're going to be fairly tanky, easy to kind of build and keep alive. Um, Sigmund the High Shield should find a noble place, both in PvE and PvP content, uh, as he owns quite a universal, but always useful, skill sets. Um, with his A1, he'll remove random buffs, um, both against bosses, and he'll also remove shield buffs. We'll get into that in a second. His A2 allows him to control enemies with Provoke, and weaken them with decrease attack. And his A3 will shield and strengthen your whole team. When hit, Sigmund will decrease the duration of enemy buffs um, with the increased chance against bosses. Also, he owns quite a powerful aura for Doom Tower. Um, it says here, please note that the format of this fusion will be a bit different, but already familiar. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just as usual, you'll need to fuse the legendary champion from epics, whilst you'll need to summon the epics from fragments. Okay, so this happened with the Brogni fusion, and it turned out to be one of the hardest fusions we've ever seen. Um, but Brogni was, in the end, well worth the, the hassle, okay? So I don't know about the epics yet. I don't know uh, who the epics are. We've not seen them. I'm guessing they're going to be four brand new epics. That's what they normally do. But Sigmund the High Shield, do I feel like I care about him just looking at him and then reading his skills? So we're talking about just looking. It looks kind of cool. It looks like an old fella that's been, um, yeah, reunited with his armor. It, it, I'm actually reading a book right now called Winter Warriors. This guy just reminds me of the White Wolf, um, the leader of a big army that's just been kind of sent home because he's got too old so we'll see we'll see anyway a1 uh fairer fights attacks one enemy removes any shield buffs i'm guessing you need accuracy to do that it doesn't say it's irresistible if it if it doesn't need accuracy then that's kind of interesting but still the rest of his kit does anyway i guess um also a 50 percent chance to remove one random other buff and a 75% when attacking bosses. I'm guessing you're going to gain another 25% through um, books if you want to book this dude. So 75% chance to remove a buff, 100% against bosses. I mean, the bosses thing is a bit like, how many bosses do we have the, where we're going to remove their buffs? Honestly, obviously clan boss can have a, a buff if this dude was going in clan boss. Um, but then the rest of his kit doesn't make that much sense. So you kind of get to what some maybe a couple of the Doom Tower bosses. I don't feel like bosses. Maybe faction wars can steal your buffs. Maybe you're trying to get rid of them. I don't know. It feels like the whole enhancing it against bosses thing for me is a bit of a mute point. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, A2 attacks all enemies two times. I like that it's a double hit. That's always useful. Each hit, 50% chance of placing provoke for one turn, um, and a 75% chance of placing decrease attack. So we're probably going to gain like another 20 odd percent, 25 percent from books here, which would mean that um, I think reading something else, it will be 20 percent. So you'd end up at 95 percent. You'd have to use a mastery to top you up to 100, but like you do with stag. But decreasing attack on an AOE is nice. It means that you're going to take less damage uh, and a provoke is nice. Honestly, for a legendary champion, I'd wish it was two turns. Like. I just wish that would be two turns. It's a four-turn cooldown, probably books to three. Come on, we've got loads of champions out there right now that do a two-turn provoke. Um, oh, no, no, we got like an Umbral as an epic that does his way better. So, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I do have multiplier info, and it's kind of like, he's like a slightly above average, but not hard-hitting. So, he's not going to be in there for the big nuke. He's in there for his control and his abilities. 
Um, just feels a bit average so far. So A3 then, Shield of the Realm. Places a shield buff on your allies for two turns, equal to 30% of this champion's HP. I've seen his base stats, so, you know, there's just over 20k, so he's got a good amount of HP to give you a decent shield. Um, also places a strengthen buff on all allies for two turns. So shield and strengthen, five turn cooldown. If this books to three, then you might have yourself a bit of clan boss utility in shields, strengthen, decrease attack, uh, removing buffs. It's okay. Um, but general, it feels to me like he's a general um, carry. A general wave carry, provoking. He's a defense-based champion, so he's got high defense. He's got a good amount of HP. So he's just going to kind of hold the enemies coming at him whilst buffing your team um, and providing a little bit of boss utility. So then he's got his passive here. Whenever this champion is attacked, 20% chance of decreasing the duration of all buffs on the attacker by a turn. 40% if it's against a boss. That's actually a really cool passive. So certainly in someone like the arena, if you've got a team that you know is going to go second, uh, if he gets hit with an AoE, buffs are just kind of getting stripped off. Um, if he lands provokes, then when people attack him, buffs will get stripped off. Doom Tower waves, kind of good for that. I'm just thinking for the arena, normally if there's a load of buffs out there, normally one of them is block debuffs, which means that he probably won't get a provoke away. So it's, it's I don't know. I don't know. On the face of it, I'm not super excited by this dude. I think he looks okay. I think for a, you know, an account that's kind of early to mid game, he will give you a lot of progression, support. Um, but he is not blowing my socks off. What do you think, guys? Comment below. Um, as I say, maybe some of these epics are going to be good. Uh, and maybe there's something I'm not thinking of here around some of the kind of buff manipulation stuff. But for me, feels like bang average. <laughs> anyway, I've been Hell Hades. I will catch you later.